All right, so uh, next up is Jenny Donnelly, but I want to, before we get to her, let me show you what happened at the Capitol just recently. Watch this. I asked God, I said, we've got to do something. And I just said, God, how in the world are we going to come together and unite on one mission to turn America back to God? And God said to me, when they take your kids. On Saturday, people in support of the hashtag, don't mess with our Flags kids. fly campaign. high in front of the state Capitol. The Capitol wearing pink and blue. We are in a divine single capital across the United States, what you're seeing is what is happening. Men and women, mama bears and papa bears, standing in 50 states, clearing the word of God, praying, fasting, and standing for the rights of our children and for our families. That school changed your name, changed your pronoun, and for good measure, sent child protective services and the police to my home because I would not accept that my daughter was now a boy. They come after our children. And so we're watching that right now. We're watching a strategic, demonic attack on our children. What has been done to me is completely unethical and proves that it has been pushing us with zero real data backing it up. And I will not stop until the butchers are locked up and the key is thrown away. We believe in the design of male and female and we stand for that. This is a prayer movement. This isn't just a political movement but we want to see Jesus followers involved civically and bringing the kingdom of heaven into every sphere that they're involved. In. Come on, are our kids worth it? Are those kids worth it? Look at these kids around you. They're worth it. I want to declare the fifth Amendment of the Bill of Rights. Let them know that they are not worth it. Let them know that they are not worth it. Let them know that they are not worth it. Many of you today are going to wake up in boldness that you never knew you had this whole time. What's your excuse? not to stand up for the rights of children and their own rights as a parent. If we are loud enough, if we are strong enough, if we are brave enough, this will end. It will end right here and right now. To call forth a million Esther, to rise, to go to the day of atonement, to apply the blood to the doorposts of our national guilt, to cry out and give birth to our children. It's time. I'm going to believe in prophecy. Millions are going to rise up. Every man of Mordecai, every woman in Esther, we must move together in a united movement to save this nation. Now, it's awesome, and it gets you wound up right there. All right, Jenny Donnelly, if you don't know who she is, she's founder of Her Voice Movement. She was in that video, which exists to awaken and activate the voices of women and believers to turn America back to God. Of course, you saw a lot of the guys are getting involved. Jenny, welcome back to Flashpoint. Talk Thank to us. you so much. It's nice yeah. to see you. Good to see you. Talk to us about, you know, the, the capitals, the, all the capitals about that move, what we just looked at. Absolutely. So many people have been coming together, of course, to call a million women to the mall in D.C. And as we were looking forward to that, we thought, you know what, there has to be something happening, happening locally for men and women to basically begin something profound on a local level, even though obviously we're calling something national in October of 2024. So many of us came together and said, let's do this at every state capitol on one single day. And we chose April 13th because Esther chapter 4, 13, which is one of my favorite verses in the book of Esther, it's when Mordecai comes back to Esther after she basically tells Mordecai, no, it's illegal. I'm not going to go before the king. I don't want to die. I'm going to keep to myself. I'm now queen. I'm nice and safe here in my palace. This is my translation. And Mordecai sends this message back to her in April. In, in 413, which is why we picked April 13th, but he, he sends this back to her in 413. He says, Esther, do not think that just because you are in the king's palace that you, of all the Jews, are going to escape destruction. She actually thought that she could escape the destruction of the Jews. What was happening to the Jews is out there. It somehow didn't affect her. And this was her wake-up call when Mordecai said, no, it is going to affect you, sweetheart. You got to get involved. So this was our way to say, right. it's time to wake up, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to move forward. But this now launches us into October 12th. All right. So talk about the uh, million women, the, what's happening. Uh, I think we got a graphic here. Explain how people can get involved. 
Yes, yeah, so a million women, this is a call, um, you, you saw Lou Engel on the video that we just showed, and he's ha he's been carrying this vision, this prophetic word for many years. I didn't even know that actually, and I didn't know Lou personally at the time, but in 2020, God spoke to me. Now, I live in Portland. You guys were just talking about Portland. So I was, I was watching the ridiculous mayhem happening in front of me. And I said, God, I am so seriously concerned about the church right now that we are just sitting on the sidelines. And the Lord said to me, he said, Jenny, a million women are going to rise up. They'll recruit their families and they're going to turn this nation back to God. I felt him put the accountability on women. No longer is it going to be tolerable for a woman to play small, silent, and compliant. Women need to step forward just like Esther did. And we're not saying to step above men. What we're saying is it's men and women. It's the Esthers and the Mordecais. So then people start telling me, Jenny, did you know that Lou Engel is carrying this vision? And I thought, well, thank God, because I don't know a million women. But you know what I found out is a whole lot of people were getting this download from God. And so Lou Engel, he was the one that announced it back in Pasadena last year in April of 2023. He announced it from the stage there at Cheon's conference. And he said, I want this to be on October 12th, the Day of Atonement. And I kind of fell out of my chair at that point because I thought, did he just say 2024? That's a little early, early for me. <laughs> it was really out of, out of my comfort zone. But that's what he said, October 12th, 2024, the Day of Atonement. And that's the day of a purification for a nation. So we're calling wow. women and families around the, around the nation and around the globe to pray for America. All right. So this movement originated in Peru uh, and it was successful. Talk about that and how it was successful there, the Don't Mess With Our Kids movement. Yeah, so a man named Christian Rosas and his sister in 2016 in Peru, there was just craziness happening, a little more advanced than what we're seeing right now in our own nation. But as an example, it was illegal to call somebody their biological pronoun if they wanted a different pronoun, meaning you were going to prison. You know, right now it's hate speech. Well, it gets worse than that, folks. It could go as far as going to prison, which is what it was in Peru in 2016. And so him and his sister, their pastor's kids, young adults, they just said, enough is enough. We're not doing this anymore. And they called the nation of Peru, anybody that loved family. If you love family, you qualify, come to Lima, Peru, and we are going to take a stand for the truth, which is God made male and God made female, which is why you saw that flag in that video of blue on the left and pink on the right. It was the family flag that they put up that said, we believe that God made two genders. That's it. We're not doing anything else. We're not doing the new vocabulary words. We're not doing the indoctrination. And we are drawing a line. And they had a groundswell of people not come to the date that they set on the calendar, but it happened before because people got so fired up, they started spilling into the streets in cities all throughout Peru. They did have a national gathering in Lima, Peru, but they didn't wait for it. They began acting all over the all over the cities, all over Peru, and then it spilled out to other countries. So when we found out about this, this was the kicker right here. They were able to oust the prime minister, wow. oust the education minister, and George Soros pulled out all of his funding. Guess what? We're seeing George Soros's funding at work on these campuses right now. And so when we heard this, we said, why not America? Let's just do what they did. And that's what we're doing. Well, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, it's amazing. All right. So a lot of this with the, the Her Voice movement, which I know is what you started. Uh, talk about there's an app. This is what the women need to get this app to be a part. Yeah, so we just put together this app that basically serves as a hub for women to, number one, we want not just women, I mean, hear my heart on this, it's everybody, but we want women and men to go and start a prayer hub. Inside this app, you get all the free prayer guides and we want you sitting down with your family because family is under attack. So in the app, you get all these free resources, including prayer guides for kids. Right now, literally, my seven-year-old is leading a prayer hub of other little kids and they use the kid's prayer guide to do it. Inside the app as well is, yes, you'll see there on the screen, we upload five coloring sheets a month. We get these kids around prayer because you know what? When this thing turns around, because I know that that's why we're all here. We're praying this thing turns around. We don't want to have our kids locked up in a room and say, hey, kids, it's all taken care of. Things are turned around. And they don't know how 
we engaged in battle. So we want to teach kids how to warfare. We've got to pour into this generation. But in the app, there is a ton of other things, also what we call the ground game. Right. So the air game is prayer and fasting. The ground game is register to vote. We want you to go in there if you think, man, God might be calling me to run for office. That seems pretty intimidating. But you know what? People have courses on how to campaign. So we've connected several organizations inside the app that have courses and other processes for you to engage and use your voice to turn America back to God. Uh, that's amazing. Let me bring uh, Dutch. You know, this is talk about the Mordecai's and the Esther's. I mean, what Jenny has started and Lou is uh, they've come together now. Uh, this is an amazing moment in America, Christian American history, but really in American history. I, I it, to me, it feels like a, uh, you know, a George Whitfield kind of moment. If we can, if we really do come together, it's not a denominational thing. It's definitely everybody come together in unity. What do you think, Dutch? Is this something that we're going to see happen? Well, I do. Uh, I, I've, I don't know Jenny. Uh, I think we've met, but but uh, but I know her heart, and I know what she does, and I, and I know Lou very well, and I, I just have watched God use Lou in these prayer events for over 20 years now. I've been to many of them, and uh, it, it, I see what, what God is doing is not a one-time event. He's been working progressively for years to bring us to this point. Right. And I think this is the year. I mean, we've been saying this is the hinge year. This is the turn, the turning. Well, I think this event is a part of it. I think God has been moving us toward this for years, maybe the last couple of decades. Right. And the marriage of this is significant because you have Jenny who's who has this great organization and she's she's action, boots on the ground. We're not gonna we're not gonna tolerate this. And, and yet you got Lou who's all about prayer and fasting. I don't know if Lou ever eats. And, 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 you know, God is now marrying these two. And I, I've talked about it before. It's like the Mark 16, the Matthew 28, the, the revival, the spiritual side, the prayer. But yeah, you got to, we got to do something. We've got to disciple nations. We have to, we have to right. do what Matthew says in 28. And this is the coming together of these. This is beautiful to me. This is saying, we're going to do something, but we're going to back it up and launch it and empower it with our prayers and fasting. This is this is wonderful. It, it is wonderful, Lance. You've actually uh, you've had Jenny join your Courage Tour and what you guys have been doing. Talk about yeah. that. Well, you know, it's funny, uh, Jenny. I've been with it's sovereignly with Jenny at that meeting up in Portland where Christian uh, Rosen was there. I was speaking up there. Four thousand women in Portland. I thought, man, why would you go to Portland? But she picked Portland, where you know Antifa is up there. And then uh, after that, then, then Cheyenne's church, I was there. I mean, I just got done speaking. And then Lou gets up and wrecks the place prophesying. Uh, and it was on April uh, 413, wasn't it? The, yeah. the date when you got called into doing this thing. So I was watching that happen. So I began, I began getting behind Jenny and saying, I believe the mama bear movement is a sociologic phenomena. What we look for in, in the church is natural movements. That is what God's doing. And what God's doing now, he's doing it with the mothers primarily. Not, not so, the dads, of course, get dragged along, but the, but the women become the elbow that gets the guy activated. And so this natural movement of mothers that's rising up comes to a kind of crescendo when Jenny preaches. It's easy for me to do an altar call for the mama bears to come forward and have 500 to 800 women. And it's like an anointing. Bam. They come forward ready to roll because they're, they're looking for a way to engage their, uh, their calling. And I think Jenny has, has the formula to make it happen. Yeah, it, it's amazing, Jenny. Uh, let me go to you, Rob. Uh, what do you think? You know, you're, you see that Jenny in this movement, uh, are you behind it? Absolutely. I had the privilege to be with Jenny and her husband at the Angelus Temple um, mm -hmm. here in, in Los Angeles. And, and one of the things that, that blesses me about uh, Esther 413 is, you know, Esther's heart. And you, you pointed this out, Jenny, that she, she was concerned about being safe. And and Biden's largest voting bloc are uh, white middle class mothers. Um, and, and because they're nurturers, they, they want their kids to be safe. But when you bring Chloe Cole up to talk about her body being mutilated uh, by by those who are, are talking about transitioning, it's not transitioning. No, no female will ever be a male. It's, it's called mutilation of a human body. And when moms hear this, they think of their own children and they're burdened by it. So you, you have 
a, a, a white middle class mother in Portland, Oregon, who's not involved by her own admission, seeing this and is moved by the spirit of God and now is taking away the strongest voting block of the secular progressive left. This is what God's people are called to do, engage in the ecclesia and, and change it for the glory of God. And Jenny, kudos to you and your husband and all the women involved. God bless you guys. It's profound and powerful. It is. All right, Thank Jenny. You. So what do you what's what is the ultimate goal here at the million women th in uh, the event in October? What, what is it that we want to see happen? Well, obviously, you know, it's a prayer gathering. Thank God for that. We're going to come and pray. We're going to repent. But there is a significant call from God to uh, activate the voices of every person there to then go home and begin or continue the reformation process. So much of the meeting is going to be dedicated to reformation, which is, hey, some people are going to have to run for office. You know what I did this year for the first time? I went to city council. Then I went to uh, the school board. I took my kids to city council for this Trans Day of Visibility because our pride community was showing up. One of the mayors um, in the county next to us decided to deny them the proclamation. And we decided, you know what, we like that decision. So we decided to show up. There was about 16 to 20 of us or whatever. I took my kids because they're homeschooled. And I thought, you'll, more, you'll learn more going to city council with me and having one of our girls testify in the microphone, et cetera, than you will if I was home reading a book to you. And so this is what we're talking about. I'm actually more familiar familiar with prayer and fasting. This whole thing where I'm showing up at school boards, I'm bringing my kids, I'm wearing pink and blue, I have a flag, I'm going to capitals. This is new for me. I want everybody out there to understand if we keep doing the same thing we've always done, we're going to get the same thing we've always got. And we can't afford to get the same thing in America. We can't afford to have our schools stay the same. We can't afford for these crazy laws to continue to pass. And I believe there are mothers and grandmothers, not to say the men don't have a strong voice, they do, but what could we do together? What could the Esther and Mordecai's do together? Ladies, no longer is it acceptable for you to hide in insecurity. It is time for you to wake up, rise up, and protect these children. It is an innate, natural, God-given bent for you to do this. It is more unnatural for you to stay silent. So I just say, you know what, if this mama from Portland can do it, so can these women. Yeah, I agree. You're not burning police cars or anything, are you? You're okay? Not, You're okay? No, not doing okay. that. Yeah. Good to hear. Uh, all right. So if you want more information on A Million Women, you can go to the website millionwomen.org or you can text uh, Esther to 21,000, 21,000, and they can get more information about the call to the mall. Thank you, Jenny, for being with us. Stick around if you got a few minutes and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll bring you back in the conversation. All right, so much happening, so much happening. We've got to, I got to keep going down the list. What's up next? I want to show you um, what Peter Navarro was on our program a, a day or two before he had to report for prison. And I want to show you what happened today with uh, Representative Matt Gates because he was denied access to Navarro. And you think, well, what's the big deal about that? Watch. Alert this house of the actions of the Federal Bureau of Prisons, which seem to be vindicating the claim made by Peter Navarro that he is being held as a political prisoner. I've been trying for five weeks to be able to interview Mr. Navarro. And there are provisions that ought to allow this, and I was informed directly by Director Peters, who runs the Bureau, that that request would be denied. And the reason it's being denied is because Peter Navarro is too notorious to be interviewed by a member of Congress. John Gotti was interviewed when he was in prison. The QAnon shaman was interviewed in prison. Director Peters herself brought NBC News through prisons to showcase the work of corrections that's being done. So I think there is something else afoot here. Mr. Navarro, I'm being told, is not being allowed to access his attorney, and it is because it is shameful what has been done to Peter Navarro based on a sham January 6th committee and a sham indictment and a sham conviction that we ought to work to remediate immediately upon President Trump's rightful and righteous return to office. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back. All right, Lance, you, you hear that? I mean, it, it really is ridiculous. How would, by the way, how would you like for your, for you to be remembered always as the QAnon shaman? I mean, it's crazy. But I mean, what he's talking about here with Peter Navarro, I mean, this is pretty blatant what they're doing, isn't it, Lance? 
Yeah, so, let, so let's uh, catch everybody in the Flashpoint Army up on this. The Trade Secretary, who was responsible for uh, challenging China and bringing manufacturing jobs back to the United States. That was the crime that the Democrat and the swamp didn't like. The second thing he did was he advised President Trump, if you want to deal with the immigration challenge, threaten Mexico with a tariff if they continue to let the border be open. That was when Mexico fulfilled the thing that Trump said that they would do, which is they paid to basically build a human wall to keep out the, uh, Im the illegal immigration. Navarro had to be punished for this because he helped the working class in America. I want you guys to understand how sinister this sick system is. So then when, he, uh, when he's called to go before, before the January 6th thing, he realizes this is a sham uh, drama. This is, a, this is Stalinist theater going on in Washington. They're making up a narrative, and that's being exposed all the time. And he said, I have executive immunity. I worked for the president. I was a cabinet member. If the president is, is standing strong on this, I'm going to stand with him. I won't go show up because I have immunity. Well, they said, you have no immunity. We will put you in prison. So now he's denied a congressman's visit. He can't even access his own lawyers because he's so dangerous. And what is he, what, what is he dangerous for? He's dangerous because he was a prestigious, uh, Ivy League-educated economist who helped working-class Americans and served Trump. That is unforgivable. It is. <laughs> All right, so you know we sh we showed you earlier uh, what was going on. I, that's the quick update with Navarro. But we're going to pray because we've got so much to pray. We got to pray for either whether it's about the uh, the million women with with Jenny or what we're talking about with the Trump cases and all of the the document case. Let's come together in unity across all your denominational lines. If there's one thing you have not heard tonight and you don't hear on Flashpoint as well. This is a, a, a certain, this denomination, this is a Baptist thing or a word of faith thing. No, listen, you are watching us on a word of faith network because that's who sponsors, that's who pays for this program to bring all of you together in victory. So let's pray right now over this situation. Father, we just lift up all that we've talked about tonight, whether it be the million women coming together and the Mordecai's and the Esther's coming together in October. Father, I ask you to quicken this and men and women across the nation that are learning about this and they want to do something, they don't know what to do, that this ignites the passion inside them to come alongside Jenny. And I pray protection over Jenny and Lou as they continue to work with her voice movement and a million women that they are protected. They walk in divine protection. Their angels guard them everywhere they go. And Father, we pray for all the all these sham trials and President Trump and that, Father, that truth prevail. We pray that truth prevails, justice is done, and we commit to continue to pray for justice to be done. Father, I thank you for America. Where America is today is only going to be a shadow of the great things to come. In Jesus' name, in agreement, we said amen. 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 All right. Thank you guys for being. Jenny, keep up the good work. We'll check in.